Hey, uh, John from York Bay Financial Partners, Zerlock in the investment markets. Pretty big week in the US this week. Uh, you've got the funding announcement, but also as well, you've got the Fed meeting as well. Now, a lot of eyes on the uh, Treasury funding announcement. It's expected to be around sort of 760 odd billion um, till the end of the year. And then for the first three months of uh, 2024, expected to be around 820 billion. Also as well, obviously, you've still got the debt ceiling that needs to be sorted um, as we now uh, into the month of November. Um, that's only a, sort of a couple of weeks away. Now, while no one expects the Fed to uh, increase interest rates, it's quite interesting to see how the 10 years sort of come back from that sort of 5%. Current around sort of 4.8%, and the two years backed off to just under 5.05%. And that's against a backdrop of the US economy that really is pretty resilient, uh, pretty robust. Uh, GDP data out uh, was uh, actually a little bit stronger than expected. Um, showing annualised growth of 4.9%. But more importantly as well, inflation still appears to be under control. With the PCE coming in at 2.4% uh, versus 2.5%, and that's sort of the Fed's preferred inflation gauge. Now certainly last week was a pretty rough week for equities. Um, you know, earnings on the whole were pretty uh, pretty good. Uh, some of the big techs were sort of you know some pretty uh, impressive beats on uh, versus estimates. Um, but uh, you know the uncertainty um, given the sort of global conflicts out there just led to a a, a pretty major sell off towards the end of the week. But then the start of this week saw a pretty major reversal with the Dow up um, over 500 points on Monday and the S&P up 40 odd points. Also as well, new home sales were pretty robust as well, um, coming in at uh, 579,000. That's first an estimate around 680 odd thousand. And the previous reading in August was 675 thousand. So again, a pretty robust housing market, which is starting to sort of pick up now. Now we'll see the big earnings this week will be Apple. Now the Magnificent 7 there, the sort of worst performer so far has been Tesla. That's down around 18% since its earnings uh, release. But further good news for the US economy is that the auto workers strike appears to be ended now with uh, solutions coming out and uh, an end to that strike. That's obviously good news for the auto workers. Interesting as well, obviously, as we uh, enter the month of November here, it's just over a year away now until the uh, presidential elections in 2024 in the US. Now on that, uh, former President Trump has been uh, fined twice now for breaching the gag order in his trials, uh, but he still seems well ahead of the polls for the Republican nomination.
So potentially over the next sort of three to six months, it could get very interesting. Especially as many as the supporters who were charged as well are now sort of taking plea deals and uh, giving evidence against him. No real fresh news on the conflicts out there. You've still got the Russian-Ukraine war sort of dragging on. And, you know, as discussed here before, I think Putin is just sort of playing a bit of a war of attrition there and really just trying to wear down the West in terms of their support for Ukraine. Also as well, Gaza is still uh, um, sort of ongoing. Um, and Israel has come out this week and said there will be no ceasefire. But what is quite interesting there is, is you know, so far it hasn't uh, sort of uh, um, developed into anything uh, more sort of severe in the Middle East uh, with the other countries getting dragged into it. But also as well, oil has sort of reacted quite strangely really and it's down now sort of low 80s per barrel. That obviously has some pretty major implications out there for the global inflation picture. Now, interesting times in the UK as well, because, you know, with inflation falling out there, the Bank of England is now is no, under no sort of uh, hurry out there to increase interest rates further. And potentially, given the fall we've seen in inflation, we might even have seen the peak in the UK interest rates. And that certainly seems to be the case in the EU region. Um, the ECB has come out and pretty much said the rates are on hold now. And again, the inflation picture out there is looking pretty good. Indeed, German inflation has fallen back down to around 3%. Um, that was around 4.3 for the June quarter. That's a pretty major reduction out there in the inflationary picture. You know, and given that, you know, it certainly does look as though, uh, you know, um, we've seen a, a peak now in European interest rates, and now the discussion will be is like, when will they start to cut? Now in Australia, the latest CPI data was just a tad stronger than anticipated. Uh, it came in at 5.4, market was looking for 5.3. But it is still well down from the 6% that uh, was printed for the uh, June quarter. And given the fall in energy prices, the Reserve Bank of Australia meets again um, on uh, November the 7th. And potentially, you probably look for rates to be left on hold there. Still just waiting to see the full impact of the recent rate hikes uh, filtering through in, into the economy. As you know, there is a, a pretty major time lag between uh, when rates are put up from the uh, central bank to when it actually hits the economy. But again, there are signs the Australian economy is still pushing on at a pretty reasonable rate. Um, you know, so you've got a little bit of uh, you know, increased activity in the housing market. You've still got pretty good migration numbers. And also a pretty big boost from tourism as well. Now here in New Zealand on Friday, we should uh, finally see all the special votes being counted for the election. And we then should have a pretty clear picture of uh, which way the uh, government is going to be formed. You 
You know, at present, National and ACT have a majority, uh, a very slim majority there, 61 seats, which is just enough to govern. Now, will the special votes alter that at all? Also, as well, we see the latest unemployment data. That's expected to just nudge up slightly to around 3.9%. Now, historically, that's still pretty low. Now, the housing market is starting to show signs of recovery as well. We've seen sort of increased levels of activity, but also prices starting to nudge up a little bit as well. And that's obviously been driven by, you know, potentially a little bit more confidence coming through, but also as well, obviously, those migration numbers are still pretty strong at over 100,000 for the year. So again, with inflation sort of falling, uh, most people expect the Reserve Bank to leave rates on hold now at its last meeting before uh, February of 2024. Now, if you are looking for income options, uh, go to the website www.bayfinancialpartners.co.nz for lots of interesting articles, and we look forward to speaking to you soon.